Hello and welcome to My Beginner's Guide. In this guide, I'll mention some activities that I feel benefit you to unlock early on. I want to make it very clear that these are just recommendations as there is no set path that you need to take. This list only scratches the surface. As a new player, you really should be exploring the game at your own pace and not worrying about being efficient. This list I compiled is mainly to help you in developing your own path and goals. Most of the recommendations in this list are for members. If you're a non-member, that's fine too. I'd recommend going through most of the free-to-play quests and content just to try it out to see if you like the combat as well as the skilling. I'll put a free-to-play logo near anything that is free-to-play in this guide. So even if you're not going to be a member right away, it's still worth watching so you can see what to expect and things that you can do if you want to plan out for the future. Maybe there's some requirements you want to reach before becoming a member. Something to note is that you can be a member by buying bonds in-game with in-game currency. Currently, as of this video, it is 26 mil for a bond, and that'll last you 14 days. The price does fluctuate, so it could go up or potentially down even further. I do have a daily money-making guide video that you can see and spend less than 30 minutes a day to make a ton of money. Also, by doing some of the quests that I mentioned later on, it'll work towards you being able to do most of the dailies that are featured in that video. So check the description down below to find a link to that guide. With that being said, let's get into the guide. The bars listed on screen are the recommended bars to use when doing general PVM. These rotations are some of the most efficient DPS that you can get out of revolution mode. The abilities in the yellow box are the abilities that will be used automatically. I'll put a link in the description so that you can see what other bars are available to you since you might have extra abilities like Sacrifice or Tux's Wrath. You don't start out with those abilities, so this is just the base bars. Be aware that with full manual combat, you will out DPS Revolution if you know what you're doing. By that I mean if you know the proper rotation and when to use specific abilities, then full manual might be the way to go. Even though full manual will give you more DPS, all content in the game can be done on Revolution Mode, and personally that's what I use. Typically what I do with my Revolution Mode is I'll allow it to use my basic abilities, and then I will use the thresholds and my ultimates on my own. That'll prevent me from wasting any ultimates or thresholds. If the monster might be close to dying, then I wouldn't want to use an ultimate, otherwise it might be a waste. So I can then save my adrenaline and use it on the next monster and your adrenaline is portrayed by this yellow bar on your hotbar. And now you can see here that my ability is ready to use Slaughter, which is a threshold, using 50% adrenaline, and now I can click on it just to use it. And then once my adrenaline reaches 100, I can use this ability called Berserk, and it'll buff me for about 20 seconds. So you can do a combination of full revolution with manual, thresholds and ultimates, or you can just do full revolution and have it do those abilities for you. Ultimately, it's up to your preference. To set up your revolution bars, you're going to go into your skills, I have them up here, and you're going to grab whatever skills you want, and you're just going to drag it over to the bar, and then just drop it. If you press escape, and you go into your settings, then you click on combat and action bars. On the first one where it says combat mode, You'll see you'll have full manual, revolution, and even legacy combat mode if you want to try that out, which is the old style of combat before 2012. When you go down here, it says revolution size. Depending on what number is in this box, we'll decide how many boxes are highlighted by the yellow. So if you only wanted to use, let's just say, four abilities, now you'll notice that only four abilities are highlighted. If you want to use 10 abilities, now you have 10 abilities on the bar highlighted, so it will go to the next bar. You can do it all of them. You can even have it so it only uses one ability. So you can really mess around depending on how much you want to be automated and how much you want to be manual. Me personally, I just have these seven abilities highlighted, and then I just use these ones with some keybinds. You can also set it so that it automatically triggers basic abilities, which is what I have. You can have it trigger thresholds, or you can also have it trigger ultimates. You could also disable that if you don't want that. Personally, I don't put my thresholds or ultimates inside this yellow bar anyways, so it doesn't really matter whether they're checked off for me. Some of the best ways to level up your account early on is through questing. Quests not only provide you with an immense story, but they also provide you with a ton of experience and other neat benefits, whether it's items or passive skills. 
I first recommend that you start with the free-to-play quests, especially if you are already free-to-play, and just knock those out of the way, because they'll give you a decent amount of levels in your combat, as well as some skills. If you are a lore hound, then I would highly recommend that you really pay attention to some of the stories, because they do go into a lot of detail, and they do have some witty remarks that you'll enjoy. The developers do put a lot of time into their quests, and it's definitely worth a read. As I said in the beginning of the video, I do want you to set your own goals, but I also want to make you aware of some of the useful quests that can be done early on. There are no story spoilers in this video, so you don't need to worry about that if you do care about lore. For the most part, you could just read through the quests on this list and some of the rewards, but I am going to point out a few of them that I think are important to know. The first one is going to be Lost City. This quest gives you access to Zarnus, unlocks a Slayer Master, and also allows you to use Dragon Longswords as well as Dragon Daggers. So that's a pretty decent weapon that you can use at around level 60. Next up, we have Fairy Tale Part 1. This one gives you an item called Magic Secateurs, which increases your farm yields by 10% for allotments, herbs, and hops patches. This is mainly useful for herbs, because herbs give you a ton of money in this game, so you're going to want to get as many as you can, and with these secateurs, it's definitely going to help. The best part is, you can put the secateurs on your tool belt, so you don't have to worry about grabbing them from your bank. Once you've completed Fairy Tale Part 1, you can move over to Part 2. For this one, you only need to start the quest, and you don't actually need the requirements to start the quest. Once you get to a certain point in the quest, you're going to be able to use fairy rings. Once you reach that point, you can use any fairy ring located around RuneScape as long as you know the code. If you want to figure out any of the codes, you could just look it up on the RuneScape wiki. Another useful quest is Ghost Ahoy. This unlocks the Ecto file, which gives you a teleport close to a herb patch in Canvas, and gives you free access to Port Phasmatis. Family Crest also provides you with two nice gloves. The first one is going to be the Cooking Gauntlets that decrease the chance of burning food items. And the other one is going to be the Smithing Gauntlets that allow you to smelt 60 bars in a relatively AFK manner. Without the gauntlets, you'd only be able to smith 28 bars and you'd have to deposit the bars every single time. The gauntlets automatically deposit them for you. If you're doing a lot of Slayer, Smoking Kills is definitely one you're going to want to do. Before you complete that quest, you're going to notice that after your fifth task in a row, you're going to get Slayer Points. If you don't complete this quest, you're only going to get half the Slayer Points that you would have earned if you did complete the quest, so definitely get that done if you're going to be doing a lot of Slayer. Jack of Spades is the third quest in a quest line that unlocks the city Menafoss. This city has a bunch of useful skills and activities that can be trained in this area. Merlin's Crystal gives you access to an Excalibur that gives you a plus 8% boost when you use its special attack. Then eventually you can upgrade to an Enhanced Excalibur that also heals you over time. Tree Gnome Village gives you access to the Spirit Tree Transportation System, and the Grand Tree gives you access to Gnome Gliders Transportation. There's a few other quests listed in here, and those mainly just give you a ton of experience in combat as well as skilling. Up next we have the Dungeoneering skill. In order to get to the location to do Dungeoneering, you're going to want to start here in Lumbridge. From Lumbridge, just run southeast. You're going to run through a graveyard until you reach a dock. There's going to be a Fremnik Shipmaster here, and then just click on the Sail option once you've right-clicked him. While in this area, be very careful about where you go. You'll notice that right now you're not in the wilderness, but if you leave through the exit, it will put you in the wilderness where anybody can attack you, kill you, and take all of your items. So be very cautious about going past this gate. So we're going to start by running west. You're going to have to talk to the Dungeoneering Tutor over here to get a tutorial on what Dungeoneering is about, and then he's going to give you a Ring of Kinship. With this ring, you no longer need to use that boat, and you could just teleport here to get here quick. Dungeoneering is just pretty much a dungeon crawler skill, where you kill a boss at the end, and then you'll get tokens for it. We're going to go over some of the useful rewards that you can get while in this area. If you run south, there is a man here that looks very cold, and he has a shop. Alright, so the first one we have here is the Bone Crusher. While carrying the Bone Crusher, it buries unnoted bones into the ground, without you having to do it manually. So this is a very good quality of life item to get early on. Then we have Herbicide that destroys any herbs that you define, and you'll get twice the amount of normal experience than if you were to clean them. So you can use these on Guams, Tarmans, Marantels, since those give very low experience. Up next we have the Charming Imp. This is a very good quality of life item because it picks up any charms that are dropped during combat. Another good reward is going to be the Gem Bag. 
It holds up to 100 gems, whether it's rubies, emeralds, sapphires, or diamonds. You can then upgrade that gem back to hold 60 of each type of gem. So instead of holding 100 gems total, you now have 60 of each gem, which is going to be 60 times 5. So it's a lot more than the 100. You can also get a ring called the Ring of Vigor. When you use an ultimate ability, instead of your adrenaline going down to 0%, it'll go down to 10%, instead of completely draining it. We also have the Demon Horn Necklace. This one gives you prayer points equivalent to what you bury. For example, if you bury a bone, you'll get 50 prayer points. If you bury a dragon bone, you're going to get 150 prayer points. This does work with a bone crusher, so if you have the bone crusher equipped on you, as well as the necklace, the bone crusher will bury the bones and you'll get prayer experience for it. You can then get some scrolls that give you passive benefits. This scroll of life gives you a 10% chance to have seeds returned to you when farming, and a 5% chance to get tree seeds returned to you. Scroll of Cleansing gives you a 1 in 8 chance that a potion will be mixed twice as fast, and a 1 in 10 chance to save ingredients. So if you plan on doing a lot of Herbalore, this is definitely a good one to get. With the Scroll of Efficiency, it has a 2% chance of refunding bars when using smithing. Scroll of Proficiency allows you to save a plank, every time you use three planks, but it's only a chance, it's not guaranteed. And the scroll of dexterity allows you to save one ingredient, assuming you're using at least three of the same ingredient. Just like the proficiency, this is only a chance. Next up, we have the Jack of Trades aura. If you hover over your aura slot on your equipment, you'll see Manage Auras here. Go ahead and click on that, and you should find the Jack of Trades aura. I currently have the Supreme Jack of Trades, which is the highest one you can get, and what happens is, if you do 20 different skills in 3 hours, you'll get a bonus XP towards the skill of your choice. Before I activate that, let me show how you get it. If you press escape, your pause menu is going to come up. Then all you have to do is click on this yak head that says updates and extras. Sometimes it's going to be the membership logo, it's going to be like a red badge with a gold trim. Or if you're free to play, it's going to be silver. So go ahead and click on that. And then you're going to see the Solomon's General Store. Once you've clicked on that, it should go to your web browser and open up the store. You're going to go to the left side and then click on Auras. And then search Jack of Trades. Now there's many different Jack of Trades that you can get. You're going to have to get the first one that has no title before it. And it's going to cost you 15,000 loyalty points. You accumulate these loyalty points just by becoming a member. You'll just get them over time. So it might be a little bit before you can get them, but it's definitely worth getting this as your first aura since this is going to be giving you a ton of bonus experience. Eventually you'll be able to upgrade this into the higher tier ones, but for now just get the first tier. When you activate the aura, you're going to have 3 hours to do 10, 15, or 20 skills, depending on which tier you have. Don't worry about being too efficient about it, it should only take you about 5 minutes to complete it. And once you do complete it, you need to deactivate the aura, go to Varrock Square, and talk to Juan. If you want to find an efficient route, you can go on the RuneScape wiki and search for Jack of Trades route, and it'll appear there. But if it's your first time, I would just recommend doing it because you're probably going to end up taking much longer trying to find an efficient route than just randomly doing the skills yourself. If you lose track about how many skills you've done, right-click on the aura and check time remaining. That'll tell you how much longer you have, as well as how many skills you've already done. Next up, we have the boss hub and its teleport. The boss hub can be found in Draenor Village, as you see right here on this sign right next to the lodestone. What you're going to do is run slightly north, and you're going to see this warrior's insignia. In order to enter the boss hub, you are going to need 60 combat at least. Once you have that requirement, just touch this stone, and it will bring you inside the warrior's retreat. Here, there's quite a few things that you can do. You have a bank chest. You have an altar that you can use once you get 200 boss kills. It'll restore your prayer points as well as summoning points and a campfire that can be upgraded with higher tier logs as you kill more bosses. And this provides you with a hit point boost that lasts one hour. In the back you're also going to see a bunch of teleports here that teleport you to various different bosses, and they, these two ones in the middle that are red can be attuned to other bosses. On the right side over here you also have the training dummies, and you can use it to see your minimum as well as your maximum hit, with a bank chest nearby as well. If you trade with War, he has a shop available to you. You can get the boss hub teleport just for 10 kills in any boss. That could be 10 giant mole kills, or that can be 5 giant mole kills and 5 KBD kills. It doesn't really matter what boss you kill, as long as they're dead. And then you have various other rewards here, but you definitely want to go for at least that hub teleport first, because it provides you with a free teleport to a bank. So it's very useful, especially early on, when teleports can be hard to get. 
If you go into Unlocks, you'll see a bunch of auras here. Vampirism is a very good aura to use early on because it provides you with pretty much a free soul split, which is a level 92 prayer that heals you with the damage that you deal. So I would highly recommend getting that because it will conserve on food during Slayer as well as bossing. Then you have these four auras right here that provide you with combat boosts for damage. They're a little bit more expensive, so they might be a little harder to get. Now let's get into some beginner bosses. The bosses on screen are the ones that I feel low levels can do at around level 50 plus for most of them. Some of them require 70, which is considered a little bit higher, but it's not that hard to get to. The two easiest bosses to do on this list are definitely going to be the Giant Mole and the King Black Dragon. The best part about these bosses is they're both free to play as well. Killing those two are going to be a very good way to get the 10 kill count that you need to unlock the boss hub teleport. If for some reason you are struggling to get those kills, you can team up with a friend to help you get those kills, so that way you'll be able to unlock that boss hub teleport just a little bit easier. There are plenty of guides online for all of these bosses, so go ahead and take a look at them before you try it out, or go in blind if you're that type of player. The last one on this list, which is Twin Furies, does require 70 plus and a decent amount of gear. The only reason I'm putting it on this list is because I feel that the mechanics aren't that unforgiving, and it's a very good boss to start out to learn mechanics and learn how to move your character in a way to avoid the mechanics. It is going to be a rather difficult fight when you're first doing it, but you'll definitely get used to it and you'll start learning methods that make you survive longer and make the kills more smooth. The last tip that I'd highly recommend is to get yourself 43 prayer. Prayer in this game is extremely powerful, especially at the high levels, but it starts at getting your protection prayers. At level 37, you unlock Protect from Magic, at 40, you unlock Protect from Missile, and at 43, you unlock Protect from Melee. This halves the damage you get by 50%, meaning that you'll take a lot less damage during your fights, saving you food, and potentially getting you more kills than you would be if you didn't use the prayers. Especially if you're going to be bossing, using prayers is pretty much a must. You can either bury bones in the ground while you're doing Slayer, or allow your Bone Crusher to do it, or you can go to a player-owned house and use their gilded altar. You would offer the bones onto the altar and it'll give you 350% more experience than if you were just to bury them outright. Starting at level 1, if you were to use dragon bones just to get to 43 and you used a player altar, it would only take you about 400,000 coins in order to get to that level, so it's really worth the investment. The best part is, these prayers are also free to play as well. Although for free to play it is going to be harder to get because you don't have access to player owned altars or dragon bones. Alright, and that is going to be the final tip of this video. I hope that this video enlightened you on some of the ways that you can progress your account and potentially help guide you into the paths that you set out for yourself. As you're playing, just remember that you don't always need to do things in the most efficient way possible, you need to do it in the most fun way possible. Otherwise, you're going to burn yourself out of this game since it can be a bit grindy at times, so try new things and it'll all work out. I do plan on making more tips and tricks as well as beginner's guides in the future, so keep an eye out for those. And leave in the comments any tips that you think I should include in the next video. So if this video helped you in any way, please leave a like, comment, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.